do you maintain that opinion as a change? Like, how do you process <coughs> that statement? No, I, I still believe in that. I still, my opinion, I, people took it out of context. Did it age well mm -hmm. or terribly? Absolutely. This all What up, everyone? Shaquille Mahjouri here for CBS Sports. And you know who this is. He was one of WWE's top stars, former champ. But the best is yet to come. He is as big and strong as I am emotionally fragile. Adam Schur, formerly Braun Strowman. How are you? Man, I'm doing great. Hope you're doing well. Thanks for having me on today. Thank you so much for making the time. Now, before we get to uh, all the excitement, all the potential announcements coming up about what's next for you i was i was reading a post that you had out there and, and something really really struck me as odd uh, i am the proud owner of a kia soul i'm like five ten and a half how on earth did you fit that frame into a kia soul man surprisingly I, it really wasn't that hard like that's one of the best cars i've had ever owned in my life at the time thank you yes coming down to moving down to florida and you know starting with wwe nxt and then traveling doing the nxt live events on the weekend and stuff. I and mean, i'd get myself and three of the other boys in there with our bags and stuff to be making towns it was a great little car a little it was a six-speed manual so it was like riding around in a little go-kart it was fun Fantastic. Thank you. I got a lot of flack because I got, I got the EV model and they're all over the place now, but it's a good car. Get to yeah. it. And I haven't looked at a gas. I haven't looked at the gas prices in like four years. So. <laughs> I don't look worried. at them either because they're just disappointingly expensive. <laughs> Now, before we get on to pro wrestling, I know um, in the last interview you did with your uh, folks over at the narrative on the podcast there, you talked about some Hollywood opportunities in the works. Is there anything we can share on that front? Uh, yeah, a lot of it's still just a lot of talk and things like that. Nothing fully on paper yet. And the stuff that we're working on is kind of hush hush. So mm -hmm. I'll have to let 2022 roll out and you guys see what happens along the way. For sure. Uh, talking about pro wrestling, I have, I have been informed that um, by the third person on this call that there has been a bit of an update on where people may be able to see you and EC3 soon. I think we have the go ahead, and I was wondering if you correct. Uh, yeah, I believe. Yeah, we, we we finally came to agreements and stuff like that, and we will be heading to Qatar in March for QPW. I'm actually looking forward to it a lot. I always love going over there. The fans are unbelievable, and it's I've never been to Qatar, so it'd be neat to add that to the resume of places that I've gone to. There's not many left on this earth that I haven't wrestled at yet, so we'll chalk that up as another one on the bucket list of buildings that I've sold out around this world. <laughs> Um, uh, you posted a little, you know, as, as the narrative stable continues to develop, obviously, you're kind of brought stable. into the four. What are we calling it? We're not a stable. A movement? It's an idea. It's an awakening. An idea? All right. It's now, an awakening. It's time to wake this business back up and make it what it was, what made it great. In terms of waking people up, I did see on your Instagram there was a post, you, EC3, one carrying cross. Is there is there something tangible there, or is this more of uh, you know it, willing something into existence? It, uh, you'll be seeing a lot more uh, rolling forward, moving out stuff, and uh, crosses on the card as well in Qatar. Um, so yeah, this is going to be part of our next step in the awakening of the wrestling business. And then uh, there's a lot, of, like I said, some of the stuff that's on the hush hush right now. Uh, I'll give you a little hint. He's in on it. <laughs> okay, okay, I like to hear that. Um, you, uh, you know, it's been mentioned that you've talked to just about every major pro wrestling company out there and that offers have been made for you as you look forward to what's next, um, whether that is you independently or you with guys like EC3 and Cross. What is it you're looking for in terms of making a full-time signing to a company? What you know, you I'm not looking for a full-time signing. I'll put okay. it right there and nip that in the butt right off the get-go. I'm looking to enjoy some, some of my time. You know, mm -hmm. I love the art of professional wrestling and stuff like that. And eight years working for WWE was very, very time-consuming, very, very blessed opportunities that I had, the, the allotment I've seen around the world and done and things. But it's nice, you know, having these last six months, per se, just to kind of take a step back 
and breathe for a second. You know, I forgot about all these little things in life that mean so much that, you know, time flies by and, and then all of a sudden you forget about it. And you don't get a chance to do it. So I'm catching up on spending time with my family and loved ones, you know, working on my mental health, my physical health, getting some of the tolls of, you know, eight years of being a WWE superstar that puts on the mind and body. So getting a little reset at that and looking to have fun, you know, um, being full time on TV every week. It, it, I ain't going to lie, it's stressful. And, you know, it's nice not having that added stress element per se every week. So right now I'm just looking to enjoy my time, have fun, sell out some buildings, raise some money for some charities and, and, yes. and just go out there and, and do what I do. And that's put smiles on people's faces. Fun fact. And we're going to get to the smiles. We're going to get to get the good causes as soon as we get through the gauntlet of new stuff that everyone's dying to know. Uh, Dave Meltzer brought it up recently that there have been maybe fresh talks with Impact to have you and EC3 there maybe bring the narrative into the fold. Uh, is there any truth on that end? Not that I've heard. That's all hearsay. You know how uh, wrestling journalists like to elaborate on their stories. But yeah, no, that's all. I mean, everything's in the talk. You know, everything, there's always a buzz about something in the wrestling world. You know, it's such a small knit community of, of athletes and talent per se that do it. There's always going to be some who knows what that gets said and somebody takes it out of context and then runs the dirt sheets with it. You know the deal. But no, I, I mean, like I said, there's always an opportunity. I never say no to anything. You know, there's a mm -hmm. there's a time, a place, and a, and a number that I mean that you got every day. All in all, you never know what'll happen. So I'll leave it at that too. You just you never know what's going to happen with wrestling. I mean, there might be an opportunity. Somebody comes waving a number at me for an allotment of time that you just can't say no to. Until that happens, I'm enjoying just goofing off and you know showing up, wreaking a little havoc, passing these hands out. You know, like what I do. Well, one place you're definitely not wreaking out any havoc is when it comes to mental health. And I know you're working on an app. I was wondering if you could touch a little bit on where that is in its process. Yeah, so it's it's still in its, its uh, blooming phases, I guess, per se. We launched it about right around Thanksgiving stuff, and it's starting to really grow. Um, partnered up with Rocket and uh, Jonathan Kendrick, a business entrepreneur and stuff like that. And the app's called Discuss. It's um, It gives you licensed certified therapists mental coaches, life coaches in the palm of your hand via audio, video, text message services, 24 hours a day. It's fully encrypted, so all your information is protected. But the coolest thing is it gives you the opportunity to do it in your own comfort, in your own home. A lot of people, myself included, when I went and talked to somebody for the first time, was really, really nervous about it. Mm -hmm. And having that option of being able to do it in your own home where you're really, really comfortable, I think that's going to help a lot more people um, be able to overcome some obstacles that they're dealing with in life, being able to use this app and things like that. Well, and that touches wonderfully on what I think was the most, for me, eye-opening part about listening to you on the Narrative Podcast was, you know, I I'm glad we're having this shift in society, but for a long time, you're not going to hear someone who looks as tough and badass as Adam Schur talk, be vulnerable, talk about uh, the things that get to them, whether it's comments online or their own insecurities for you can you talk to me a little bit about the process of, of, of learning to open up and be more open with your vulnerabilities i think it, like um opening up a lot helped me, with me deal with it you know of constantly having this you know toxic masculinity blah 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 that we <laughs> i just fee fi fo fum my way through life grinding up people's kids and make my bread and yada 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 but no learning to actually just, just discuss my problems and stuff like that everybody has problems you know and it's it's so faux pas, like, oh, just swallow your feelings and yada, yada. That doesn't work. It does for a while, but eventually you're going to swallow so much or you're going to explode. And that's what happened with me and things like that. So just having the opportunity and that's for your friends, your family, your loved ones. That's the cool thing with, with human beings would set us apart from the animal kingdom and, and reign us or deem us superior on this earth is the ability to work together to overcome obstacles. I mean, yes, that happens some in the animal team and in the grand scheme of things, like they're trying to eat, they're trying to sleep, they're trying to reproduce, and they're trying not to be eaten. With humans, we have all these other opportunities of helping each other, and that's that's what it really boils down to, and that's why I'm so proud to partner up with this company and stuff like that to be able to do this. At the end of the day, this is what it's about. I mean, I want to be remembered for doing something more than just beating the shit out of people in a wrestling ring. <laughs> Hey, uh, speaking of beating the shit out of people, who do you think hits the hardest that you've stepped into the ring with? Uh, well, without a doubt, Brock. I mean, come on. I think I'm one of the only wow. people that's taken a, a solid right hand from him and not went night-night on this earth. 
that's a that's a scary proposition whether or not you know you're in a in a, in a scripted environment um <laughs> hey man i you know at the end of, we laugh about it afterwards laugh about it all the time you know if uh, i was signed up to play badminton i'd sign up to play badminton i know it goes on in that ring and it's what i said you're two big tough dominant alpha males and you know push come to shove and crap happens and it is what it is make for good tv in my opinion i agree wholeheartedly the, the you know the best parts <laughs> of pro wrestling have elements of realism um, there's one thing I want to touch on before we get to some of the fun stuff. Uh, in 2020, you got a little bit of quite a bit of slack online for uh, comments you made about uh, financially supporting independent wrestlers in the onset of the pandemic. Now that we've had you know a year more to digest what this pandemic has been, as well as the fact that you know at the time you were the WWE, now you are technically an independent wrestler in some sense. Uh, I just wanted you to uh, you know talk about do you maintain that opinion as a change like how do you process <laughs> that statement no, I, I still believe in i still my opinion I, people took it out of context did it age well mm -hmm. or terribly absolutely this all happened before i made that comment like months before the lockdown for all this stuff and of course everybody ran wild with it trying to make more out of it than it really was for the clickbait but at the end of the day it was motivational in my opinion what i was trying to talk about and how i said it is that sometimes in life your goals are what you dream about you can't do and that's just points dry and simple. And so many people, I think, have gotten complacent with putting their problems and making somebody else's theirs, where I didn't, this didn't happen for me because of this, instead of owning up and realizing, you know what, sometimes you got to control your own destiny. That's how it was with me and Strongman. I was absolutely one of the top, I was in the top five strongest guys on the planet. I loved it. I didn't want to leave the sport, but I couldn't pay my bills. Mm -hmm. So there comes a time when you have to realize what is an, a, an achievable and attainable goal, but what you have to do to survive. And that was how all that just got taken out of context. And it's just some people don't like it. Some people do. And it, either way, it doesn't bother me none because that's how I still believe I've worked my butt off for everything I've gotten in my entire life. And it was a motivational thing to tell people, hey, you know, sometimes this might not work out for you. Go and try something else. and Look what can happen. That's what it was for me. Look what I was doing. And look, I took a chance. And look what I made out of it. Yeah, well, I, and I think it's a great to clarify because, you know, people can make what they will, right or wrong, about how something reads. But boy, I've learned you could talk about how your grandmother makes the best oatmeal cookies and people will take it wrong online. Well, so that, that's, I, think, I mean, that's that's exactly it. You can't make everybody happy at the end of the day. No, it doesn't and, matter and people read what. things differently, too, right? People exactly. put emphasis Everything comes on at, things. There was times when I read stuff, everything comes off differently, the context of things through text and reading emails and stuff. All, and that's such a huge thing that I'm learning that people are losing because you can't tell. It's so much easier like to have this conversation how I just explained it to you. Now you go, oh, shit, I understand why. Versus reading something when you're already in a bad mood, crap's going on in the world, you don't know, and you're just like, fuck this guy. Well, they and yeah, exactly. And I appreciate you uh, being willing to address it. Um, I put out a Q&A thread I usually do, and thank you for retweeting it. It's always nice to get the fans involved. Um, a lot of people... so. There's a great bit that you had in the WWE uh, where, like, a runaway train, you would just explode through people outside of the ring. But at some point, we did start piping in the train noises. A lot of people were wondering, like, how that idea was pitched to you and what you thought about the inclusion of the uh, actual we were, train they were, We were goofing around. Uh, I think it was, we were still at Minute Maid Park in St. Pete was where we were doing it. And they just came up with this idea and they played it one time in uh, rehearsals and they said, what'd you think about it? I said, if Vince likes it, I love it. And that's how <laughs> it happened. <laughs> that is the company man through and through. You talked about your career in Strongman being one of the top five. I was wondering, can you tell me a little bit about how the conditioning and strength program difference, differs between pro wrestling? And oh my God, it's night and day difference. I mean, I, my body was calloused and trained to be able to go maximum performance for 90 seconds two minutes at a time max it's being going out and wrestling for 45 minutes it's a complete opposite end of the spectrum and that was one of the hardest things for me was learning to control my breathing while being believable and everything and it's so such a mental to physical connection with me because i am so much bigger i am so much stronger that i know that and i keep it somewhat restrained so i don't actually hurt people and not on wood i take pride in that i've never hurt anybody in my entire career being that much bigger and stronger than everyone so it was a big learning process to one control all that 
unadulterated rage and strength that I possess, but, you know, then learning the art of the business and how to do this stuff. So yeah, the conditioning is things like that. And plus I came in and I was, I was legit 405 pounds when I started with WWE. I debuted on TV at like 380 to 390 ish and then bounced around between like 310 and 350 over the few couple of years. Like my last match at WWE, I think I was like right at 335 ish. I'm like 345, 350 right now. Um, obviously when you're wrestling, especially WWE schedule, it, it, it's a lot of activity, but in terms of the strength routine, uh, what's, what's more prone to injuries, strong man or wrestling? I think strong man injuries come out of nowhere that you don't really expect. Whereas like wrestling, usually a lot of it comes on either your mistake or somebody else's mistake or a mistake usually is what causes, I think an injury in wrestling versus strong man. You just, when you're trying to yeah push the maximum human performance to setting world records, I mean, eventually the human body's going to break and you know, <laughs> things just happen. That's like with me at uh, the Arnold classic 2000 and what was it? 12. Yeah, I was warming up for Atlas stones, which I was going to try and br- attempt to break the world record at it and detach my bicep, like toward my bicep just while warming up. So it's just with strong man, as you said, you're competing at such an, at least at the professional level, competing at the Arnold's World Strongest Man and stuff. It's such an elite level of like everything. The Arnold Classic is set up that every lift, if it's achieved, it breaks the world record. So everything is pushing the human body as absolute hard as far as it can. Whereas wrestling kind of, you take this, you teach your body to get build this callus up to get used to taking the bumps and the falls, but you learn. That's why with, with, with me and stuff, with what I learned at the WWE Performance Center at the time, I was like, what the hell? When are we going to learn how to do like power bombs and suplex and all this <laughs> stuff? But all these little things that we had to do in like the beginner's class really like is all taught so you have this muscle memory of learning how to do these different roles and different things to protect yourself and now you know after doing it for years and years and years i realized like all this stuff is like ingrained into my into my brain like i don't have to think about it in my mind and body so if i'm falling and oh my god my my brain goes shit you're falling wrong my body automatically knows how to roll out of it so a lot of that stuff is just the difference and all of that yeah um one thing on the pro wrestling end it seems like you're really involved in freeing the narrative, controlling the narrative. Can you tell me a little bit about on the creative end? Obviously, this is something that EC3 has been working on for years now. How involved are you on the back end and on on evolving this moving forward? A, a lot. I'm like we're all hands on EC3, myself, JC, the main three components of control your narrative. Uh, it's really cool because we all are very visual minded of what we want, but we all have different visions that somehow cross paths. You know, it's the old ghost ghostbusters don't cross the streams and then we cross the streams and look what we do. Um, it's neat just being able to see. And I was so involved with stuff with WWE, like behind the scenes producing with all the crazy mm-hmm. matches, the promos, all the skits of the flipping the amulets is a lot of that stuff. Like they asked me my input and things like that. So I got to see the ins and the outs of proper camera angles, timing, positioning, continuity of the shots. So no, all that knowledge that the that WWE bestowed upon me, I'm being able to, you know, give back out now and not only our project narrative stuff, control your narrative project, but other aspects of entertainment in different entities. So it's a really neat tool that I was gifted while at my time with WWE. Uh, you have to keep two of these articles and wear them every day for the rest of your life. You can dump one of them. Fanny packs, Crocs, Stringer tank tops. I can keep two and dump one. Yeah. But you got to wear those two every day. Uh, stringer and fanny packs. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to EC3 for the question. I would <laughs> like to take the credit myself. And uh, speaking of celebrity guest questions, Mojo Raleigh's blowing up that q a tweet with just question after question after question i think he's, he's in the middle of a tmz shoot right now so i'll ask you one for him have you ever plugged a bar during a wwe promo to get free drinks no but mojo did while we were wrestling in downtown orlando one time we had a segment where he like beat someone taught or got like rolled up or some some quick segment and then like i'll fight anybody He's cutting these promos and he's plugging all of our cool downtown spots on the on the microphone. So to make sure when we go out bar hopping afterwards, we get free drinks at him. So that was just him lobbing a softball up for himself to hit a home run. Did it work? <laughs> but that's what we do. I mean, that's yeah. that's that's team NFG to the T. 
Did, did it work? Did you guys get the free drinks? <laughs> Absolutely. I don't remember going right. home that night, but I know I took an Uber because <laughs> I got charged for it. <laughs> Amazing. I can't. I don't even want to know how much a, a guy your size has to drink to, uh, to end up in yeah, that Yeah, enough to float a battleship around like Skinner said back in the day. <laughs> well, on that note, let's end it on, on health, some health and wellness. So I know you got like a nutrition brand, uh, nutrition situation coming up too. I'm going to let you plug that, whatever you like. I'm going to get my spiel out of the way since you've been so generous with your time. Leave you with the last word. Guys. Thank you so much for checking out the video. As always, if you can hit thumbs up, subscribe, notification bell, comment, all that stuff helps the video get to more people. Thank you to CBS Sports as always for empowering the video. Full feature, cbssports.com in the description. Adam Schur, the Titan. The, the the new master of the narrative, at least one part of <laughs> I'm it. not I'm not the master of the narrative. Mike's still the master. I'm just the muscle. All right. Well, mu muscle and some brains. Let's not tell ourselves <laughs> too short there. Adam, now, whatever now you want to let the people know. And the brawn of the operation. What exactly. <laughs> you know what, man? Cheesy quotes always do well on pro wrestling tees. So I think <laughs> I think you might want to run with that. Well, one. I'm Adam, that. I know we just did a I didn't know that uh, we just did a thing with pro wrestling tees. They got some wrestling box they're creating with a bunch of little knickknacks of me and all the the new stuff that uh isn't copyrighted amazing so whatever you want to let the people know now's your chance man. yeah definitely stay tuned follow me on my social medias adam share 99 on twitter instagram and i've got a, a what is it tiktok's the other one i started playing around on that so i posted stuff it's usually raquel doing stupid stuff to me at the gym but uh supplement company actually we got an email today I, I have today or tomorrow to come finish up with between five to ten names i don't have an exact name in it to run through the trademarking process hopefully by the end of the first quarter of 2022 we will launch my supplement company we um uh, we have all the legal ends and blah 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 the, the boring stuff all taken care of now we're working on the fun stuff but gonna launch yeah with the mainly your basic stuff started pre-workout post-workout bcaa's protein powder but i'm going to be working on a lot of other wellness things as well with um things for mood enhancement that had change your help with brain cognitive function producing more so <laughs> excuse me dopamine and things like that to help you relax after your workout get your serotonin up bring your mm -hmm. cortisol levels down um working on a multivitamin for an adolescence and for adults probiotics his and hers different variants of it because everybody's body's different and you know just all in all having gonna hopefully run a fun campaign with it uh once we get all launched i'm looking to do a, a a schedule where i take a week every month and do like an rv tour around the country hit the cool gyms and everything said and goes well with what we're doing and things like that um we're going to try and take the control of your narrative on the road with it as well and start hosting live events uh, right now mike jc and i selves are trying to hash something out we're going to do one here locally in orlando very short and then green bay wisconsin i believe will be our next one and then yeah just stay tuned on that follow control your narrative the guys are involved in it um yeah 2022 is going to be an awesome year and i can't wait to take everybody on the journey with us amazing and i want to lay one debate to rest i swear i watched like four or five videos to make sure i got the pronunciation of your last name right. i think i botched it so to if set the close, debate to rest share it is, is, is it sheer, sure, or somewhere in between? Sheer, like Sonny and Cher. Cher, okay, yeah. I got it. Apologies, but now everyone knows, never make it again. Just, yeah, I don't, Adam yeah, Cher, call me so whatever, much. just don't call me late for dinner. <laughs> Love it. Adam Cher, big 2022, about the same as a stature. Really appreciate you doing <laughs> this, man. Thank you so much. Cheers, thank you.